The term camera of the year gets passed around a lot. And honestly, it feels like every other week we have a new Sony or the new Fuji just came out. And these are all seemingly fantastic cameras that I'd love to get my hands on if any of those companies are listening. And as you guys may know, I'm a huge fan of Blackmagic cameras. I love my DJI Ronin. But honestly, if I had to give camera of the year away right now, I'm giving it to this. But no matter what sort of setup or rig I've created with the iPhone, there's always been one kind of issue I've had. What I've been using recently is this, an SD card. One of the best, in fact. And while in my other rigs, it does indeed work for filming externally for the iPhone to give you some extra storage. And most of the time in my testing, it would work just fine. But once you start going to like 4K60, 4K60 ProRes HQ, or you're filming for long periods of time, cards like this this can start to exceed or really max out with the max write speeds. And a lot of you let me know that in the comments below with various SD cards that you've tried on those rigs. And today we have our solution. And today we have our solution. That was it. That was the good one. High five. <laughs> I want to be clear, this video is not sponsored in any way by either of these companies, but they are both good friends and they generously provided me with this equipment so I could create this video for you. Now first up we have from Condor Blue. They actually teamed up with Angel Bird to create this little contraption right here. At the heart of it is this tiny little metal module that is essentially a CF Express Type B card reader that also happens to be MagSafe friendly and attached directly to the back of the iPhone, but it also has a quarter 20 slot on the bottom, even has some anti-twisting locking pins, and it also does come in a regular SD version as well for those who want that one. And if there's one thing I love about Angel Birds, both SSD and card readers, is they have recessed connections so the cable actually goes all the way deep into the reader. And then on the bottom part of the cable, it's actually at a right angle. Uh, and so that way you can magnetize it to the back of your iPhone and then plug this in. But I have a small point of feedback, Condor, and that is I'm guessing I need to grab my wife's phone to check because she is the regular 15 Pro. This is the 15 Pro Max. And the cable needs to be like a quarter or half an inch longer because now when I have it connected here, even if I like kind of bend the stiff cable to do it, it'll magnetize a bit, but it's definitely not as strong of a hold. It's ever so slightly off there and I can't get straight, which just bugs my OCD of this setup a little bit. But besides that piece of feedback, this is a very nice and convenient way to bring external recording to your iPhone, especially if you already have CF Express Type B media. A lot of the newer cards, I know especially Sony shooters, and I think newer Canon cinema line as well, shoot CF Express Type B, and so that can come in handy if you already have the expensive media. And this media is certainly not cheap, but there's a reason for that. They also sent me a custom media tank that has my name and initial focus right on top of it. Thank you so much. That's so kind, Angel Bird or Condor, whoever decided to do that as a very satisfying. Ooh, they sent me three different options, the 512, the two terabyte and the four terabyte CF Express Type B. Now the two and four terabyte have the same exact specs to them. And I knocked down my nice little setup here. So we can see that we have 1785 megabytes per second max read speed and up to 1550 megabytes write speed. So that is way more than the 300 max megabyte per second uh, speeds on this. And even the 512, which has the slower of the two, that one has a max write speed of 850 megabytes. So let's go ahead and pop one of these bad boys into our media reader. So let's hop into our Blackmagic camera app. We can go into our settings. And if we go down to media, save clips to files. And then if we go all the way back here. So now under locations, we can see the type B four terabyte card. So I placed a folder, which I can do by hitting those three dots at the top there, new folder. I made it Apple log. And you can already see I've been shooting some different clips with it. So I'm just gonna choose the Apple Log folder here, we can see save clips to Apple Log. And you can also see that now I'm shooting at 422 HQ, the highest uh, codec I can. I've got 4K 60 on, 
And as I hit record here, I've recorded for a handful of minutes at a time, and this thing has never stopped on 4K60 ProRes HQ, which is the highest that this phone can handle. And we can also see in the bottom left that we have just over five hours of record time on the four terabyte, and that is incredible. So now this is not a setup that I could actually take on vacation, and instead of worrying about filling up my phone, because there are some times when you just, you know, you have the one-off clip here and there, even in ProRes, and that's fine on a one terabyte. That will slowly fill up as the year goes on. But where I run into issues is I'll go out for like a family day or on vacation where I'm filming a ton, a ton of clips and I want them all to be in ProRes, Apple Log, and that you're basically doing a real shoot with a real camera. And so that going to an external media, I think is well worth it. So yes, this is obviously more expensive as a card than an SSD. So an SSD works great, but like I said, if you have a type B camera already and you want one of the best memory cards that you can get, then you can pick one of these up and now you can use it for both the best mobile camera out there as well as your other professional cameras as well. And that's pretty nuts that you can have the same media for two setups, but I'm not done. Uh, I wanna show you guys kind of a updated version of my favorite rig that I've been shooting on. If you follow me on Instagram, which you all should be, I'm trying to grow it more this year, I'd appreciate it. One of my most recent reels, I showed off shooting on the naked camera with nothing attached and the B-Script Depth of Field Mark III with this vintage Nikon lens. It's kind of a cool, just minimalist setup. So now we've got our phone in there and we're good to go. Even though the back of this is open, it is just past the point where the top part of MagSafe doesn't work. So how perfect would that have been if that lined up right there? Um, but unfortunately, it does not magnetize. But thankfully, since Angel Bird makes the media reader, they also make, of course, all the other cables that they come with. So it fits perfectly, and I can take a quarter 20 to quarter 20 adapter right on top there and I'm just going to put this on. Now, if I tighten it all the way, it doesn't line up perfectly, but you'll see that doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take one of my trusty 180 degree adapters. So now I've got my inverted USB-C connector right there. Plug one end and one end into here. And then the fact that it's not fully locked down due to the tension of the cable, uh, it's not really gonna turn much on you, so it doesn't really bother me. Uh, you can see it doesn't really move around or cause an issue. But now we have a pretty sleek cable, right? Like it's not any big annoying cables. You don't have to cable manage anything. That looks really nice there. And I've got my type B memory card right there that I can easily pull in and out of. Uh, swap cards if I need to fill up even more. I know what you're thinking, Michael, one more. We need one more level because I need to connect other accessories. What about my uh, Rode Wireless Pro microphones or anything? Well, I thought you might ask, so let's go ahead and test it out. Obviously, this is gonna complicate the rig just a little bit more. So I just have this nice built-in uh, USB-C splitter with uh, four different USB-C ports. I'm actually gonna take off the 180 adapter because uh, it just feels like one too many uh, adapters and this feeds in nicely. Like all good rigging, you wanna test things out before you really cable manage, so this isn't gonna look pretty right off the bat. Uh, grab our Rode Wireless Pros here, plug that one in, and I'll just grab one of the microphones to turn it on. Now obviously this doesn't look as pretty, but let's see how functional it is. So if we go under our Blackmagic camera settings here, and we go save file clips two. We can still see that the files app is being read. That's our folder we want. And then if I go up to audio, we can see the Rode Wireless Pros right there. So yeah, you have to cable manage this one a little bit more, uh, but it is still fully functional and we still have two other USB-C ports that we could connect to. So if you didn't want this Belkin adapter, you could find something else that has like HDMI or or whatever other accessories you may need. So huge shout, I don't know, I'm talking to this one. So huge shout out to Condor Blue and Angel Bird for sending this whole kit out. I think if you have the means and the desire to create the ultimate iPhone filmmaking setup and you never wanna worry 
about record uh, reads and write speeds, then it seems like CF Express Type B is the way to go. These are, this is even faster than a lot of the SSDs out there. As always, of course, I'm interested in your opinions in the comments below. And if you want to see what a crazy iPhone rig looks like, even with a monitor hooked up to it, check out this video right over here.